Hello students, hope you are doing well. So here we have the directions for questions. So the directions uh, for question is saying that the passage below is accompanied by a set of questions. We need to choose the best answer to each question. Well, uh, I assume that what you have gone through the text. Let's look at the text. Um, despite you have read it, uh, I would like to give a kind of a uh, little idea about this text. I would also give you the more details out of this text. Uh, let's see that. So if you look into it, uh, the text discusses the idea that human understanding is shaped. Human understanding is uh, shaped by the kind of a beings we can be traced back at least as far as Immanuel Kant's critic of your region isn't it your region so here you would find out it is stated about human understanding so it is shaped by the nature and how they interact with the world it traces this idea from Immanuel Kant's uh, work and discusses how subsequent philosophers like subsequent philosophers like uh, you can talk about uh, mm, like Edmund Husserl, right? You can say that Edmund Husserl. Edmund Husserl encouraged philosophers. Uh, um, and also you talk about uh, Martin Hedger. So Martin Hedger. And also you talk about Maurice Merleau Ponty, right? Built up on it. So you talk about whom? Edmund Husserl, Martin Hedger, and you talk about Maurice Marleau Ponty, isn't it? Mm, yeah, so yes, here you would find out Maurice Marleau Ponty. Um, so, who have been built up on it? The main idea of the passage is that uh, if you look into the text, the main idea of the passage is uh, indicating that human perception, what does it say? It said that a human perception, human perception and understanding, right? Human perception and understanding, understanding. So those are closely tied, those are closely uh, tied to their bodily experiences and actions. And this perspective has gained popularity in modern cognitive sciences as embodied, uh, you can say that uh, as embodied cognition. So the argument presented is that humans, humans perceive, perceive and interact, interact with the world in relation to their own agency and that considering different goals or different perspective is essential for understanding the world and others. So, and finally, in the conclusion, what do we find out? The conclusion is that a new perspective, right? So, um, and also stated about the new perspective on the relationship between the body, action, and perception has been gaining nothing but a traction. Traction in cognitive science. Traction in cognitive cognitive science. Isn't it? Cognitive science. So here you also find out the author's tone. So what is the tone of the author? If I look into the author's tone of the uh, tone of the author, so it seems like what? Uh, analytical one, right? So analytical one. So as it is, it has been analyzed, or you can or consider also informative, right? So if I uh, clearly say that the text mainly discusses the philosophical development, philosophical development uh, of the idea that human understanding is, um, you can say that deeply linked to human existence human development is deeply linked to human existence and bodily experiences so uh, if i talk about uh, 
Uh, like I pointed, it is the tone of the text is informative, presenting complex philosophical ideas in a straightforward and educational manner. So if you look at the style of the passage, so we can say the style is nothing but again expository or explaining, right? So conveying the evolution of uh, philosophical concept from um, Immanuel Kant's views through the lenses of subsequent philosophers and their perspectives on human experiences. And as far as I told you about the main idea of the text. Now let's go to the first question of the text. So what is the first question of the text here? Now the question stated here, which statement is consistent with the passage discussion? Seeing in perspective. Which statement is consistent with the passage discussion of seeing in perspective? Let's analyze each of the option and see that what what does each of the option points out? So the first option says, seeing in perspective involves a focus on the mind's imposition of order on raw sensory data. Second, seeing in perspective is primarily concerned with the metaphysical inquiries about reality. Third, seeing in perspective is essential for understanding the world as it relates to one's agency and action. And four, seeing in perspective is a term that synonymous with embodied cognition. I hope means after reading the men's uh, options, you must have got your own men's uh, own answer. Well, let me discuss that. If you observe the option one, option one is incorrect while the because while the passage mentions Kant's views, right, on the mind's imposition of order on sensory data, this is not directly related to what? seeing in perspective right now and if you look into the two so two is also incorrect because uh, the passage does not associate in where uh, you can talk about uh, seeing in perspective with uh, metaphysical right metaphysical inquiries about reality it focus uh, it focuses on the role of agency 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 and uh, you can say that action, agency and action, isn't it? So, uh, therefore, we can consider option two is also wrong. Um, option three, now, if you object to option three, what does it say? Seeing in perspective, it is essential for understanding the world as it relates to one's agency and action. Yes, this could be considered as the um, <coughs> one of the appropriate option which will uh, taking towards the passage discussion of seeing and perspective. Uh, the passage actually emphasizes that seeing and perspective is essential for understanding the world, right? Because it relates to one's agency, one's agency and actions, right or not? Look into the option four. Option four, uh, Obviously, it will go incorrect uh, as we find out our answers. Yet, we, if we find out uh, option four is the better one, then we'll go for it. Let's look into it. Seeing in perspective is a term that is synonymous with embodied cognition. No, it cannot be. Because option four uh, doesn't suggest that, right, or doesn't go with the passage, whose idea is what? Seeing in perspective is synonymous with the embodied uh, cognition, right? So that's what is not suggested by the passage. Uh, so embodied cognition is a related but distinct concept discussed separately in the passage. So therefore, it is wrong to connect uh, that seeing in perspective is synonymous with embodied uh, cognition. Why? Because embodied cognition is a, a unique one. This, so it has been distinct. Right, so distinct um, and discussed separately in the passage. Hence, I can say that one, two, four are eliminated. Option three would be the most appropriate answer to it. So I hope you understood the question's answer. That's all. Let's move to the next question. 